Hey guys, in this video, I explain an EMS acronym that is making its way around the United States, specifically used for radio and bedside trauma reports, and that is MIST. So let's get started. MIST has been around now for a while in the United States. First developed for military use, it soon became clear that MIST had applications outside of military field medicine. Now seeing many EMS and trauma systems around the country switching from long-winded head-to-toe radio and bedside trauma reports to a short, sweet, and to-the-point report. Let's jump onto the computer and draw out exactly what MIST covers. Alright guys, so when we're going over the MIST report, we first have to remember the origin story. Remember that MIST was developed for the military, so think about like militaristic field medicine. Okay, I, you know, uh, one of our soldiers screaming over to the medic because another, you know, soldier got, you know, blown up or something like that. And when that medic arrives, they're not looking for, oh, his history, oh, his meds, oh, this, oh, that, you know, oh, he was walking and strolling and then, you know, he picked up a rock and, you know, there was an IED underneath it and boom, they're looking for... This is his name, blast injury to the leg, this is what I've done, okay? And the rest they can get later, okay? And that is the origin story and how we need to be thinking about our missed reports when we're walking into the ERs because the, the information exchange is not much different, okay? So the first thing that we're always, always, always going to give, no matter what, is the name, age, and the sex of your patient right? This is Frank. He's 32. He's male. Okay. Um, then when we start getting into mist, we're going to first do the MOI or the mechanism of injury. Okay. What actually happened to cause this injury? Was it a blast? Was it a car accident? Um, you know, all of these different things and then you kind of branch out on there so you know we get into some specifics okay we um we talk about if it's a car accident the speed what they hit were they wearing their seat belt um you know if it was uh, a weapon what kind of weapon if it was a gun what caliber all of these different kinds of very quick specifics okay then we're gonna go down and we're going to talk about our injuries okay and we're talking here a quick head to toe okay this is not a long-winded head is clear neck is clear shoulders are clear this is Frank had a you know gunshot wound to the chest there is a sucking chest wound to the left peck. Okay? Boom. That's that is the injury and the mechanism mechanism of injury. Okay? We want to be quick in our delivery. We want to give uh some, you know, uh specifics like deformities um and pain, okay? Um, these are things that we can take the time right here to be able to, you know, uh, tell the trauma staff. Okay. Then we're going to go down into our signs and symptoms. Okay. Now this, you're thinking, well, signs and symptoms, but I could be here all day. Okay. Well, yes and no. We want to go over how they were presenting, uh, initially, Okay, and how they're presenting currently. Okay, then we want to give vitals. Okay, we definitely always want to give vitals, including the uh, highest BP and the lowest BP. Okay, that is important because this right here gives you the trend. Uh, you'll also typically also do the highest and lowest heart rate. Okay, you can throw a GCS in here, but remember this is not, you know, uh, giving the whole long story. This is 
how they were initially. You don't really have to do the changes in the middle. You can just do what they are now. They remain the same or they got worse or they got better. Okay. And lastly is the treatments. Okay. Um, here, IVs, um, you know, tubes, if you've intubated them, um, you know, any type of uh, meds that you've given and the response to those meds. Okay. All of these will go here. Okay. Uh, you can, because it's trauma, your splints and or your bandaging. Okay. Will be all in here. Okay. And this is missed. Like I said, it is very short. It's very specific. You should be able to give mist within 30 to 45 seconds of when you start to talk in the trauma room. This is your goal, okay? The trauma team just needs to get started. They don't need the long-winded history of the patient. They just need to know what to focus on right as soon as you walk in the door. Then you can go over to the charge nurse or the recorder and give, you know, they're allergic to penicillin, they're, they're this, they're that, they're a COPD or they have asthma, whatever, okay? They don't need that right, uh, right up front. Well, guys, that's it for today's video. Stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next video.